had this much fun in my entire life, and I hope that you have enjoyed this week, too. That's the whole point of all of this. Let's turn to our virtual friends and family, our VFFs! How fun is that? Emily, can I ask you a question? Who was your favorite guest this week? I loved your interview with Charlize. It was so natural and organic and part of a genuine conversation. I loved it. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. It's so nice to hear feedback, you know? It gives us a sense of what people are liking or connecting to. It's really important. Thank you for sharing. I mean it. You know what? Spoiler alert. All of the guests were my favorite. Okay. <laughs> it's true. I'm so excited for today's guest, too. Billy Porter is here, and he is nominated for another Emmy this weekend. In fact, I even wore this outfit for him because, I mean, he is the king of style. Also today, the mom behind this viral photo opens up about her son's struggle with distance learning, something a lot of us can relate to. This photo went crazy, and we get to talk to her today. But first, let's get into some Drew's news. <laughs> This is Drew's News. It's Drew's News. Fun fact, the dog in the Drew's News monologue opener, that's Lucy, my dog. All right, now let's see what made the papers. Okay, first up, the Deseret News reports on a new study from Brigham Young looking at why girls love Disney princesses so much. They surveyed a large group of girls and found that they connected to them for four reasons. Okay, their virtues, their royalty, <laughs> their aspirational lives, okay, and their rebellious spirit. Hmm. I can relate to that last one. So can my daughter, Olive. Trust me. The thing about this, though, that really speaks to me is it reminds me of making a movie called Ever After. Thanks, guys. The reason Ever After changed my life is because as a girl, we read fairy tales and we're a little conditioned to wait to be rescued. And this film totally flipped the script, pun intended, on that for me. It's like, we still want love at the end of the day. You still want the prince. You still want all the romance. But the point is to get yourself there. And for me, to have that revelation at, in my early 20s, that we don't wait to be rescued, we rescue ourselves, well, it changed the entire course of the rest of my professional and personal life. And I just want to thank Disney because I think you've really modernized fairy tales for young girls out there. We no longer wait to be rescued. We do want love and the prince at the end of the day, don't get us wrong, but you've shown us that we can dream big princess and be capable, and we need stories that remind us of just that, so thank you. So, okay, in transition, our next story requires you to loosen that belt buckle because it's some time for food news. Okay, this story totally spoke to me because my girls get so excited when I say, we're going to the gas station. It's kind of their favorite place to eat. It's true, come on, there's so many treats and snacks, they love it. So, check this out, girls. 7-Eleven is getting in on the action with a new line of autumnal sandwich cookies. They've got pumpkin spice, they've got salted caramel, they've even got ye olde candy corn. All sold by the sleeve, and I've got some right here. That's right, apparently this is called a sleeve. I just learned that too. All right. Let's taste test the candy corn, ye old candy corn. Uh, oh, hey, BFFs, Nathan, Ashley, you want to get it on, on the action? I heard you ran out to 7-Eleven and picked some up to taste test with me. Hi, Drew. Yeah, we just got back. We got some candy corn. We can't wait to try it. And also pumpkin spice. Cheers. Cookie cheers. 
What do you guys think? They're I not think, bad. Yeah, I think they taste pretty much exactly like candy corn, maybe a little bit sweeter, but they're great. I definitely taste the pumpkin, not as much spice, but it's good. I'm going to say winner, winner, chicken dinner. I'm in. And thank you, Nathan and Ashley, for being culinary guinea pigs with me. Okay. Now it is time for our Drew's News Astrology Report. So here to help us read the stars is astrologer extraordinaire, Aliza Kelly. Drew, thank you so much for having me. Congratulations. Thank you so much. This I, is so exciting. It is. It is it's crazy. so exciting. And it's like first week done. Got it. Okay, here we go. And we get to go into the weekend with you. And I want to ask September, what's going on? Well, you launched at the perfect time because we are actually in a transitional moment right now. So on September 22nd, we are beginning Libra season. It's the autumn equinox. So we're moving into a reflective, thoughtful energy. We're going to see a little less sun, but this means that we're going to be our own sun. We're going to generate our own radiance, and we're going to learn to understand ourselves from a different perspective. Aliza, can I ask you what a birth chart is? It is basically a snapshot of the sky at someone's or something's exact time of birth. So using the birth chart, we could see the rising, the sun, and the moon, and we can really understand who that person is or if it's an event, what that person or what that event is all about. Well, speaking of birth charts, I heard you maybe have a surprise for us. I do, I do. Okay, so I know that this is your launch week. I know that you just launched on September 14th. So I decided to look at the astrology for the Drew Barrymore show. It's like having a birth chart for basically our third, my third child. Yes. Okay, tell us, what is it? So you have a beautiful third child. Uh, the third child is a Libra rising. So this is perfect. It's beautiful. It's about balance. It's about harmony. It's about symmetry. And it's also a very social energy. So it's about sharing the stage. It's about you giving basically a space for others to be able to share their stories too. It's all about that scales of balance. Oh my gosh, that's exactly what our mission is here. It's perfect. Okay, wait. Okay, what about our rising sun? So the sun is a Virgo for the Drew Barrymore show. And what I really love about this is that you are a Pisces. I am. And Virgo and Pisces are opposite signs, but opposite in astrology is actually a very wonderful thing because it means the goal is the same, just different ways of getting there. So you and the show are basically have the same mission, which it, which is how can I make the world a better place? And how about the moon? Arr, arr, arr! <laughs> Yes, so the moon is also a very important part of the astrology. It is sh sort of what's going on on the inside. It is the emotional inner world. And in this case, it's really showing us the backbone of the show. And it's Leo, which is all about entertaining and theatricality and passion and really having fun. So at the end of the day, we're going to find balance. We're going to help people. We're going to use communication, and we're also going to have a great time and look fabulous while we're doing it. So that's a pretty good chart, I would say. <laughs> Aliza! It's a good chart. And you know what I did? I hope it's okay not to add more onto your plate, but um, I asked my mom if she would give me the exact time I was born. It's 11.51 a.m., and I've never had my chart done. Could you I? haven't? Uh-uh. Oh my goodness, I, <laughs> we have to do this right now. Could I ask you to do my chart and we could come back on the show and talk about it? It's a yes from me. It's a big yes from thank me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> 